But what a coincidence. He's with us today. He this is. hour on this Friday the 13th. Knockout hour. Yeah. It will be. You will find out what politician could get knocked out by Evander Holyfield during in about 51 minutes. Fantastic. Stay in the ring for all of that. Yes. Good but first tease. we bring you this. We've got a Fox News alert to start this Friday morning. Even more chaos erupting in the Middle East. We're learning Al-Qaeda fighters are reportedly in control of a military base in Yemen. All right, and ISIS militants are dangerously close to an air base full of U.S. Marines. So where's the White House stand on all of this right now? It's a great question there, and that's why we have Leland Vittert live in Washington with this and more. Leland, good morning to you. Well, good morning, Elizabeth. Remember, the president had said that the Yemeni government was a key ally. It was a success story in his foreign policy portfolio. Now it is all this Lots of weapons up for grabs, and it didn't take long after the U.S. embassy was evacuated. Much of the U.S. counterterrorism assets left the country. Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula took over a key army base. A Twitter account linked to Al Qaeda in Yemen put up pictures of militants parading the spoils of war, allegedly from the base they took over. The situation, as you've uh, referenced in your opening here, is just too volatile to be on the ground right now. That's not about American leadership. That is about the situation on the ground and concerns about uh, the future of Yemen for the Yemeni people. This is a huge strategic gain for the Iranians. We have lost a pro-government, as you indicated. The Iranians are the gain here. The Houthis are a militant proxy of the Iranian government. They use the Quds Force and other reinforcements to assist in driving the, the pro-government right. troops out of Yemen. And as we've seen in the past 24 hours, Al-Qaeda is using this time of an American vacuum with less counterterrorism operations to rearm and regroup. Keep in mind, the fall of Yemen also complicates things for Saudi Arabia, whose arch rival Iran now has proxies in Iraq to their north and, as we've seen, in Yemen to their south. It would be difficult at this point to put together a scenario where an American-friendly government could come back to power in Yemen, that country that was once called just a couple of months ago a success story. Back to you. Yeah, we remember that. Uh, Leland, thank you very much. Uh, she was, uh, Jen Psaki from the State Department was yeah. talking about, oh, there's plenty of U.S. leadership. Uh, really? Uh, then how come there doesn't seem to be a plan? If you, if you examine what we've told you so far, where the, uh, the U.S. left cars in the VIP lane at the airport with the keys in them, and saying we'll be back and they assume that we're going to be able to get them in the same condition that's crazy if there was a plan then why did uh, why was there no military transport to get our people out of there they had to fly a commercial charter and then if there was a plan why did the marines have to destroy their weapons before they could get on that airplane that is just if it is a plan it's bad planning yeah she said that we have it under control doesn't seem to be that way charles cronhammer now standing op-ed piece says the president is suffering from tactical paralysis. He went on to say this at the Kelly file, that this is beyond anything he's seen. It's humiliating. Watch. On the tactical level, just sort of explaining, looking at the evacuation, it's really, it's humiliating. And this is after Benghazi. It isn't as if we didn't know what was going to happen. The Houthis took effective control of Sana'a, the capital, a few weeks ago. A week ago, they announced they were going to take over the government. This is not sudden. It isn't as if it happened overnight. And yet, with all the planning, they had to leave with the keys in the cars running. The Marines humiliatingly had to remove their weapons and leave them behind. And you asked, why was there no military transport? There was no answer to that. I assume it's because the Houthi government, or the junta, you might say, uh, could not guarantee the safety or might even have said we're going to shoot you down. And he went on to say something, and I thought the same thing as I watched Megan uh, with Jen Psaki last night, is that you got to double her pay because she's forced to defend and uh, define policies that are indefensible and undefinable because they don't exist. I don't think the president's really sweating it out per se, but just think about it. I think there's got to be a relationship between what's happening in the Ukraine, what is happening in Syria, sure. what is happening in Iraq, what is happening with our negotiations, what is happening in Yemen, what is happening in Nigeria. All it is is America pulling back. We're watching what life is like sure. without the U.S. taking Wait, interest. Wait, from the right. outside. From are the you, outside. Brian, are you saying 
saying we should double Jen Psaki's pay because she does such a good job telling a fib? No, what she just can't defend his policies. But it's, they're indefensible, and that's why. But the, yeah. the problem is this. He's got a secretary of defense saying the world is exploding all over. Attorney general saying that the threat of terror keeps him up all night. The U.N. chief says that Yemen is collapsing right before our eyes. So on the day, on the very day that Ky Kayla Mueller is confirmed yeah. to be dead at the hands of terrorism, how does our president respond? YOLO, watch. Thanks, Obama. Mr. President? Can I live? You do you. YOLO, man. That was produced by BuzzFeed, and as Elizabeth said, it was shot in the White House on the day that it was revealed that uh, Kayla Mueller was indeed dead. Uh, it was produced, it was a subtle way of ha introducing the BuzzFeed audience to the fact that the open enrollment for the Obamacare program is running closed on uh, February the 15th. And so, you know, he's making all these crazy faces and he's carrying a selfie stick and he's sticking out his tongue well, like that. He and believes, he's throwing pictures of he, Michelle he on believes, his doodle pad. Yeah, he believes to get uh, young people to sign up for Obamacare in the next couple of days, literally a couple of days, he has to go to where they are and they're going on BuzzFeed, they're going online, listening on the, on the iPhones, not watching his addresses or Josh Ernest uh, fend off questions. So therefore, this is what he's doing. He says it worked between two ferns and he thinks it'll work again. The problem here is that there seems to be a chronic blindness toward what is going on globally and it, especially at the hands of the lives of Americans. I mean we saw a beheading and then we saw the president go golfing. We hear about Kayla Mueller's death being confirmed and then we hear that he's Taping filming this. this video that he's on mission for Obamacare despite what is going on in the world and to some it is just disheartening and humiliating. Some some like it. Some think it's funny. I, I looked online there are many many I'm sure there are uh, young people who sure. Surf around it's just the, the timing they, of it. No, the timing is, you know, that's... Uh, that's Questionable. Get your antenna up. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt said, uh, speak softly and carry a big stick. Apparently, the pres this president interprets it. If you want to sell Obamacare, speak softly, but carry a selfie stick. Why right. not? Well, listen to this.